Hi everybody, welcome back to the Guava's Grace podcast channel, where we show gratitude for the grace of God and we use our gifts to glorify Him. Welcome to the channel once again. If you are new, thank you for tuning in to watch this video. We are going to be talking about the topic of modesty. It's not really a topic that you hear too much in the mainstream because it's a worldly thing to be um you know more sexy and to meet the constant changing beauty standards of the world it's more appealing okay to society but now that i have entered my relationship with christ on a deeper level and i've gone through my own levels of conviction and change and discipline and growth and just constantly yielding to the holy spirit i have been convicted multiple times on what i should be representing myself as when it comes to representing god and this may be different for everybody i want to go ahead and put that disclaimer that modesty is not a just one size fits all it's very subjective to whatever culture you might come from whatever background that you might have it also may depend on your type of religious values because some people are very religious they're not really you know focused on the spiritual side of religion and having a relationship with god they're focused on the religion and the legalism of it you know so I definitely feel that modesty from my perspective may be different from other people's but I want to share with you guys the things that God has wanted me to share on this channel for about three or four months now and how I feel it could help and support some women who are already on a modesty journey or possibly want to get on a modesty journey or you might run across this video and it might convict you or support you in some of the things that you were already thinking and God is just pushing you to that next level to take a modesty journey of your own. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I was not that girl who just dressed up super sexy and was out in the world with barely nakedness. Like I had a self, you know, um, like a self confidence issue. Um, not really like disliking my body but I also didn't feel comfortable with exposing my body I also grew up Christian so I knew like certain clothes weren't really appropriate but as I got to be an adult and I started gearing away from Christ and just being you know in the world and being influenced by people in the world even though I still had my own kind of like mindset I never really followed trends I never really you know submitted to the worldly trends in the way that eurocentric standard american beauty looks like i still decided that i wanted to feel and look good and i still got influenced in some ways by the standard american beauty um so i'm sorry american beauty standards so i definitely have went through a phase of my life where i dressed more revealing i dressed a little bit more what would be considered sexy or feminine and that is also subjective because somebody might have not felt that that was sexy or feminine they might have thought it was not feminine they might have thought it was like trashy or whatever but i pretty much wore tight-fitting clothes I really, 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 I ain't gonna lie y'all, I really liked showing off my tatas. I really liked showing off my boobs because I felt like my mom went through breast cancer and she got her boobs removed. My other aunt went through breast cancer, she got her boobs removed. I always felt like your boobs were like a badge of honor that God has blessed you with boobs and you're healthy and you should be able to show those things off. And I also was influenced by culture like telling us that our body is our own and just being kind of like feminine feminized in a way that was also um sexualization so i thought that femininity meant that you should experience life kind of through the lens of what men see us as and of course that is definitely not how i want to be seen um so 
I kind of fell into that worldly perception of what was sexy, what was beautiful, what was attractive, what was feminine. And even though I didn't go to the far end of the spectrum, like a lot of the celebrities and the Instagram models are doing, and they're barely wearing any clothes and short shirts and t-shirts that barely cover their butt. I wasn't on that, but I was still not, in my opinion, dressing according to what I felt God would want me to be representing him as once I got saved. And even before I got saved in my relationship with God, like I didn't truly connect the dots that how I dressed would send certain signals to the world. I thought that if I'm fully clothed, it didn't matter if the clothes were tight. I thought if I'm fully clothed, it didn't matter if something was a little see-through. It's not like you can see my underwear. But I realized that I was getting certain attention from men and certain attention from even other women saying like, oh girl, I see your body and you're this and you're that. Even when I went on my weight loss journey and my health journey, I would post a lot of pictures in regards to my holistic health and how I lost weight and how my body was changing and my fitness journey. That's a whole nother story. But I do see how those pictures brought a lot of attention to me. They weren't focused on what I had to say. It was focused on what I looked like. And a lot of women were attracted to me because they liked the way my body looked. And I'm not talking about a sexual attraction. I mean, they wanted to also get fit and detox and go on a holistic health journey and they liked the results that I had so they would be interested in being close to me or knowing what I did or become my friend because they saw what was happening with my physical and not really concerned with who I was inside and the spiritual person that I was and the depth that I have okay so first of all let's talk about what modesty is and what it means to be set apart I'm going to start with the part about being set apart because when God sets apart, sets apart someone or he sets us apart, it means that he sees something in us that he knows that maybe his other children do not have because he placed a specific gift or a specific talent or a specific characteristic in us. Or he may have specifically seen how obedient we are when it comes to him telling us to do something and he wants to reward us by setting us apart from other people and putting us in a place where we can absorb and experience his blessings and the prosperity and the love that he has to offer us. And I'm not talking about worldly prosperity of financial success. I'm talking about long life, healthy life, influence, and just blessings beyond measure. Okay. Now, being set apart means that you're also different doesn't mean that you're better than anyone, but it does mean that you're different, which means that if you're being set apart by God, you are also one of his representatives. You're like the CEO of the co of the company. You're like, you know, the president of the entire country spiritually. And God over the area of influence he gives you, like I'm influencing on here on YouTube, you know, I have to represent God in a specific way. And though he has set me apart, I also have to show up as someone that is set apart. It means that I'm not like the people in this world. It means that I'm not like the girls on Instagram. It means that I'm not like celebrities or I'm not like social media influencers that are typically showing up a certain way for today's society's, um, you know, terms, you know. So I had to realize that regardless of what people like, I have to show up as who God made me be because he set me apart for a reason. And that uniqueness about me is what's going to attract people to me because they've never seen what I am and who God has made me to be. And it's actually an advantage that most people don't know that they have when they're set apart because they're so busy trying to blend into the world. And this ties into modesty because a lot of us don't have a influence of modesty on us because everybody's trying to be like everybody else and so I grew up around a lot of friends who practiced Islam and I saw them walk through their modesty journeys and I saw how difficult it was where they would be kind of ridiculed or teased or bullied for wearing their hijab or they might even be like admired for their beauty but a guy is still like oh I bet under that hijab she's got a fat booty or she you know I bet her 
her boobs are super big and she's probably fine underneath all of that. And it's like women were still getting sexualized and you can't help that because today's society is super sick and perverted because of the enemy and sin. But unfortunately, um, you know, you are still a human being who wants to get attention or who wants to. And when I say get attention, I'm not talking about from a worldly perspective. We all want to be seen. That's the best way to say it. I want to be seen by people who look or I'm sorry, not look like me, but by people who look at me for who I am. Um, I want to be seen by like-minded people. I want to be seen by somebody who's totally different from me, but might be inspired to be like me, you know, to follow God and to trust God in their life. So all of that means that when you're set apart, there is a level of uh, turmoil that you might experience, a level of, you know, struggle that you may go through you may have you know some crosses to bear because you're not like the world so how that leads into modesty is that when you are awakened to Christ's love and you're awakened to how much God values you and how much he prioritizes his love for you how he sees you as fearfully and wonderfully made how he sees you as a daughter how he sees you as a light and salt in this earth you start to realize that God would never sexualize his daughter that God would never pervert his daughter God would never put you in a position to be perverted or to be sexualized where it could bring harm or hurt or damage to you spiritually, emotionally, or physically. So you start to see how much value you have and what, what God sees you as. He sees you so beautifully and so pure and he wants to, you know, keep you innocent and pure and he wants to send you into marriage with that purity. He wants to show you to the world with that purity. He wants to influence others with your purity. And unfortunately, the world just does not promote that. The world doesn't promote purity. The world doesn't promote modesty. It doesn't promote, you know, femininity in a biblical way. It promotes, you know, exploitation and just feminism. You know, it it's, it definitely doesn't do a good job of making sure that women understand their value and their worth and that it's not defined by what the world says about you or what men say about you or even what other women say about you. It is defined by what God has already said about you before he made you and what his word has said about you before the beginning of time. So we are the rib of Adam. We are the daughters of God. We are the mothers of the earth. When I say that, I mean we give life to man just like man gave life to us. That is in the Bible. And we have power and we have influence and we have purpose and we have so much inside of us that God wants to reveal through us. But it sometimes cannot be done if so much of us is exposed to where there's a distraction from what God is trying to do through us spiritually and give us, you know, the influence in the world if we are a distraction to God's purpose and his plan. And part of the reason why modesty is so important for me is because I want people to hear what I'm saying and understand what I'm saying because I'm speaking from a place where I'm trying to get people to hear the gospel. I am trying to get people to give their life to Christ and to come to um, the conclusion that there is nothing greater than the Lord and the Savior. And unfortunately, people get so distracted um, by the physical aspect of things that they do not value the emotional and the spiritual. Now, I do want to say that your appearance still should be valued. Modesty is not an ode to giving up all of your beauty and walking away from any form of vanity. Vanity in exploitation is evil. Obviously, when vanity is used to control, when vanity is used to manipulate, when vanity is used to try to get a man or try to attract things or own things or get money or to make schemes and plots and plans to get your way, when it's used for exploitation, it is demonic. But when it is used for an outward expression of your beauty to represent God, that's when God, in Him making all things beautiful, comes into play. 
So how we can have a fine balance between beauty and having being able to represent God is by finding this place in the middle where modesty exists, where God created modesty um, to protect us, number one. He created modesty to keep us pure, and he created modesty to represent him, okay, as a spiritual being and not a physical being, okay? And though God came as Jesus in the flesh as his son, we do have to realize that Jesus represented God in everything he did. He wasn't walking around shirtless wearing gray, sh gray sweatpants showing off his eggplant. <laughs> and I hate to be so descriptive, but we have men out there that also need to adopt these same values and apply them to masculinity because modesty with men is also being lost. I have literally scrolled through Instagram and seen men twerking, seen men, you know, shifting their hips back and forth or in underwear in a Calvin Klein ad where you can see all of their package. Um, you see men barely with clothes on, the crack of their butt is out of their pants. It's like modesty should be applied to everybody. It's not just a oppression for women. <laughs> okay, that's not what modesty is. It is a value system in which God has put you in a place where you are set apart from the world and he wants you to honor and represent him through the way you appear to the world. Okay, so modesty key points. I got some note cards here, which is something that I usually don't do because I usually spit it all from the dome. Okay, don't play me. <laughs> Remember, I'm saved, but I'm still I'm still me. Okay, and I'm going to start showing you guys a little bit more of me through my videos because I think it's dope when I can just be myself with you guys. But I got note cards today, girl or guys. Um, these are for me to be able to to really just kind of hone into this from an educational standpoint. I don't want to just be on here talking to you guys about dress this way and look this way. No, I want to back it up. I want to back up what I'm talking about, okay? Modesty key points that I want to focus on. Number one, modesty is not oppression, but it is truly expression. Imagine if you stop looking at modesty as a way to oppress you. A lot of times when we see people who practice Islam and in Middle Eastern countries, we think those women are oppressed, but really they're empowered because they can get to show up in the world as who they are without people judging them exactly for what they have on their body or for their body in their body types, right? Even though Western world judges them in their particular countries and in their environments and in their culture, modesty is something that's normal. Modesty is something that's glorified and, 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 and something to be proud, proud of. And sometimes it can be glorified to a fault, but um, as long as it's judgment free, I think modesty is a beautiful thing and we have a lot that we can learn from our Muslim brothers and sisters in regards to honoring the temple, okay? Because they practice fasting, they practice modesty, they practice, and I know Christians practice fasting too, but I'm saying they have a specific lifestyle of doing this consistently and they teach their children and they implement it. Like there's so many Christian households where I saw the parents fast and they didn't make the kids fast. And it's like, how do kids ever grow that discipline if their parents don't make them do the things that they believe or teach them those values and customs? And I feel like the Eastern world has done a great job of doing that. It's us over here in the West who have struggled to. Even though we have different cultural beliefs, we can still learn from people, even if they don't believe the same things that we believe while we educate them on the things of the Lord. So modesty is not oppression, but the true expression of who you are through Christ. Modesty, number two, is not for others, but for glorifying God by using ourselves as a gift to God and offering to him and, and, and saving ourselves for him and our husbands and our wives. Modesty doesn't equal boring. It challenges you to be creative with self-expression. Now, since I started my modesty journey, I feel like I have been dressing the best I have ever dressed. I have been dressing more chic. I have been dressing more polished. As you can see, I look cute today. I got my rings on still, bracelet. I got a little necklace, some really cute earrings from, um, I think this is Fashion Nova, and they were only like $3. Um, this blazer is from H&M. This top, I think, is from Zara. It's like, I'm still looking fashionable. I'm still looking 
like who I am and expressing my unique, you know, style, but I also get to glorify God and I get to express myself at the same time. So it's definitely not oppressive. I'm not showing any skin. You can't even see my neck in this. It's warm outside, but I can easily take this jacket off and be one layer less, but I'm still representing God with no skin showing, okay? Um, modesty can help you heal from the spirit of comparison, lust, and insecurity. That one is so huge for me because a lot of women are competing in this world. They're competing on who has the better body, who has the better booty, who has the better shape, who looks more like J-Lo, who looks more like Beyonce, who looks more like Rihanna, who looks more like this person or that person, who's got the prettier eyes, who's got the thicker thighs. It's like we really have gotten to a point where our society has focused on comparison so much that people are mutilating their bodies through getting surgeries and alterations and injections just to look like someone else when if they learned that their beauty is a representation of christ their beauty is about what god says about you their beauty is an internal essence that you carry a spiritual covering that you have then you wouldn't be so pressed about looking like the next woman because she might get the man you want or she might get the attention that you want or she might get the job you want. It's really ridiculous and I'm going to say it and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I'm not living in the sense in the state of offense anymore. So I don't care if I offend other people because sometimes we have to be a little offended for us to be convicted to grow and change. That's how all my convictions change. I, it started at first with offense and then it grew into understanding. And now that I'm where I'm at spiritually, I understand I don't have to be offended because something that someone might say, it can either be education or it could be information. And in either way, I'm learning, okay? So modesty can help you heal from the spirit of comparison and lust you know a lot of us dress inappropriately and dress so provocatively because we are lusting after the things of the world lusting after men lusting after women lusting after sex lusting after attention and we have so much insecurity in ourselves because we want approval and we want validation from the world that we are out here literally racing to get to a road that does not end because all the exploitation it unfortunately leads you to nowhere okay and the next thing I have is that modesty focus on who you are in Christ and not what you can offer to the world <sighs> okay I like this one a lot because a lot of times we think our value is in what we can do for people and what we can do for the world, what we can do in our jobs, what we can do at school, how much we can achieve, how successful we become. And in today's society, success with women has been kind of equating to how attractive you are, how far you can get with your looks, how far you can go with a nice body and a nice face. And unfortunately, we have to understand that we don't have to offer anything to this world. The only thing we're supposed to be offering is the love of God and obedience to the Lord. We are not supposed to be living along the world's terms. So we have to understand that our bodies are not serving plates to be able to serve other people. They're the house for the Holy Spirit. It is a temple. It is a sacred place. And this is why we must not defile it or abuse it or manipulate it or expose it inappropriately. The last one is that modesty gives you permission to align with God's will for your life, not with society's pressures of worldly beauty standards. I love this one because it says it gives you permission. A lot of people think that, like I said before, modesty is so oppressive, they don't even understand that modesty is freeing. Because it allows you to be able to say, well, I'm not just my body. I am not just what I look like. I'm not just beauty standards. I am God's daughter. And I don't have to subscribe to what you desire for me to be. So I think that last one was dope because moral beauty standards don't exist anymore. Everything is technically immoral now. 
and we have people that are willing to literally cut open their bodies to look um, and appear beautiful according to what the world says is attractive. Now, what is modesty? The definition of modesty is behavior or manner or appearance intended to avoid impropriety or indecency. The quality of not being too proud or confident about yourself or your abilities. I love that character definition. The character definition is the quality of not being too proud or confident about yourself or your abilities. So this definition is pretty much saying that the character definition is, is pretty much talking about like you not being too proud of your external. Like it's trying to humble you. This definition wants to humble you and say, you know, this is not about what you look like. It's about who you are. And I love that because a lot of people should view modesty that way. Um, so the standards of modesty, they change and they fluctuate throughout the world and they change throughout the times. If you look back at pictures of people in the 90s, women weren't dressing as sexy as they dress now. And if you look back at pictures in the 1900s, you definitely see that we were fully clothed and fully colored covered okay it was the influence of the world and sin that made dress codes change so standards of modesty modesty discourages or forbids exposures of parts of the body modesty varies between societies and different cultures the focus on modesty may include areas of the skin exposure areas like the hair the undergarments intimate parts or even certain skin showing. Standards may also include focus on the shape of the body or specific parts of it by not wearing form-fitting or tight clothing that expose the person. I love that because a lot of times I would see like pictures of modest clothing and no one's showing an ounce of skin but you see the impression of their breasts, you see their nipples, you see like the, between the dress it's see-through it's like that's still not modesty you know we're not here to judge or point our fingers and say that's less modest than the other thing you know I've seen on like um forums for women who are practicing Islam where some women just tear each other apart like oh my god you are not dressing the way Allah wants you to dress because your 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 wrists are showing it and I know they have specific customs and beliefs that align with that in their Quran and that they are following their word of God but I don't like how the people in the comments will tear apart this woman who's trying to represent God and literally just tear her character apart because her wrists are showing or because you know her neck is, 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 is showing from the hijab not being properly placed and it's like you never know that woman of God could have been uh, just learning how to dress modest and she hasn't gotten where you're at. Or same for me, I could just be learning how to be modest and someone who's been practicing modesty in Christianity for God, and you know, in Christ our Lord Savior, they may not have, you know, any skin show. You're tied up, you know, because I know that certain um, denominations in Christianity, they tie their hair. They don't even expose their hair. They don't expose their neck. They don't expose their wrists or their ankles or their knees or their legs. They wear full body covering, just like similar to women of Islam. And they are very persistent about making sure that these practices and morals get pushed down to every generation and that they practice this, this, this format of modesty. But I will say that when people judge each other and they pick each other apart in the comment sections of YouTube or they go under videos and they create fake accounts to shame and body shame women or to, you know, embarrass them in front of other people that are in their community, I feel that is very inappropriate. And even myself, I've seen some beautiful women walk up into church and they're dressed totally inappropriately. But what I had to realize and what I've had to tell other people is like, at least that woman came to the house of God. She may not be dressed like a messenger of God, but at least she came to get God's message. And unfortunately, we have so much judgment in our society and judgment within our communities that, you know, even seeing a woman walk through a holy place looking 
like a you know ho uh <laughs> you don't know her story you don't know where she's been she probably can't even afford new clothes yet she probably can't afford to dress modest all her money went towards the little skimpy balenciaga clothes and her, her trying to look like kim kardashian because she was in a stage of brokenness and that's all she has in her closet so would you rather her show up as she is or would you rather her not come at all and allow her through the love of christ and through the love of the community to show her the way okay we're supposed to raise up children the way that they should go we're all children and daughters and sons in christ right so that means we shouldn't be judging each other on what we're wearing. We should be representing what God wants us to look like and influencing people to be convicted to change on their own and educating so that, you know, when we walk into the world, we're not coming in, you know, looking like we don't know what God said about us. OK, so, you know, growing up in a Christian environment, I remember being a little girl and people talking about some of the girls who were dressed a little bit more, you know, exposed and who had tighter jeans and wore their hair down and they're only like 14 and they had a silk press. It's like they were sexualized even in the church. And it's our job to to stop that from happening. It's also our job for those little girls to be protected because there's predators in the church as well. There's predators in the world, there's predator in households, there's predators at schools, there's predators everywhere. And we have to protect our babies by implementing these tools for them to be able to say, well, not only do I honor my body, but I honor God. And I also honor and value myself. And this is inappropriate. You know, all of those things blend together. And we have to be just conscious that there's a deeper root to everything. And why people show up in the world the way they do is deeper than you think, okay? So why is dressing modest important? We honor God by dressing modest. It's important to honor your temple, honor your body, um, protect yourself. Um, number two, that leads into protection from the spirit of perversion. We have to protect our daughters and our sons from the spirit of perversion. Yes, a grown man shouldn't be looking at a little girl inappropriately no matter what she's wearing, but we also should not provoke anybody into seeing someone as a sexual object because of their bodily representation. What people don't understand is that a woman who gets raped or a woman who gets abused, it's not because of what she wore. It's because a man is perverted. And we have to protect women from that spirit of perversion. Part of that protection is showing up in the world as someone of value so that you know you can't mess with us. Okay? Covering our kids and our women and our sons and our daughters in protection with the word of God and the Holy Spirit and praying over them and anointing them while they sleep. Okay? This is so deep. I can get so far into this. Y'all don't want me to get started, but... I really want you guys to understand that, you know, we have to protect ourselves and our children from the spirit of perversion in the world. That is the enemy's plan is to pervert and to manipulate. Well, uh, another thing that modesty does that's really important, it is allows your light to shine versus your image to be seen and judged. That's beautiful. It allows your light to shine versus your image to be seen. I love that because when I think about Jesus and I see all those images of like a white Jesus, I used to feel weird about it when I was a young girl because, you know, you would have like your parents tell you that Jesus is from, you know, a, a, a specific uh, geographical location that made his skin dark. OK, it literally describes God's skin as being closer to mine than the pictures that I've seen of Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes, okay? It said that Jesus had wooly hair, okay? Wooly hair, like a woman or a man of color, okay? You don't see too many people of Caucasian descent that have wooly hair. And we're not into this, we're not getting into the topic of saying if Jesus was white or black because I don't think he was either. I think Jesus was Jesus and that's all that matters, okay? But Jesus was the son of God and one thing I realized is that when I would see those images that didn't look like me, it would kind of detour me from getting a, a deeper and closer relationship because I'm like, 
I grew up in a place where there's racism and there's you know exploitation of black people and exploitation of foreigners exploitation of Asian people and you know Indian people and people from the Middle East and South America you know there's exploitation of all these people that look closer to me than I look to you and for some reason it's because our skin tone and our eye shape and our hair and our bodies are different than that of the Eurocentric standard okay European standards okay so that confused me and I would say that it definitely detoured me from some of my deepening of my relationship with God until I got exposed more obviously I grew up in a black predominantly black or african-american church mixed church but it was just it was just super uncomfortable to constantly see pictures of Jesus that look nothing like me and so the point I'm trying to make is that modesty allows I'm trying to connect this it allows your light to shine versus your image to be seen I don't care what Jesus looked like I have the Bible that described him I have the Bible that tells me who he was what his character was like who he walked with I have my Bible that tells me that God is the son I mean that Jesus is the son of God and that you know through the, the, the through the son we get to meet the father I don't care about what Jesus looked like and that leads to the point of saying you shouldn't care what you look like either Yes, we want to care how we represent ourselves in the world and how we represent God. But why are we so focused on who has a bigger butt, who has thicker thighs, who is skinnier, who is slimmer, who's taller, whose boobs are bigger? You guys are missing the point. People are missing the point that it is our light, it is the character of who we are, the representation of Jesus that matters, not what we look like, okay? That is why God made us all so different, because if we all look the same, who would be able to differentiate who from who? You know, there's so many different people that show up in the Bible who have so much power and representation of Christ. And it's so powerful that they were all different and all from different places, all from different geographical lo locations. And I think that's super dope how, how God shows us that in the Bible, because he's trying to get us to understand that it's not where we come from or what we look like. It's who our father is. Okay. Um, dressing modesty is important because it brings comfort and confidence internally and physically. I realized that when I started dressing modest, I didn't have to worry about if too much of my boob, side boob was hanging out. I didn't have to worry about if my belly was hanging out. I didn't have to worry about if my jeans were too tight and I look fat in them. In modesty, I can just go a size up <laughs> and wear some baggy jeans. Okay. I also need to keep my weight down sometimes. You know, we have to definitely still stay feminine and honor our temple and our nutrition and our health. But yeah, as you fluctuate with your weight, I think modesty is super dope because you're not trying to expose yourself anyway. You can definitely dress for your body type. You can cover up the areas that you don't want people to see and that you don't want people to focus on. And you can really just make it a dope experience for you to express your style and who you are and your characteristic and your confidence versus trying to appeal to look like the beauty standards of the world. And some of these kind of repeat themselves. But yeah, I dress comfortably. I don't dress restrictive anymore. A lot of those tight clothes and popular like stylish clothes that were like fast fashion, they were very restrictive. They made me have to put on tighter um, shirts and shorter clothes and stuff that gives you a wedgie like I don't want to wear that stuff. I want to be comfortable and give every moment of my life to being seated in the place of God, in the in the comfort of God. And that means resting in him. I can't rest in him and, and sit down and pray. And I got a thong up my butt. <laughs> I would just be real with y'all. I got a thong up my butt constricting my airways, okay? I don't need all that, okay? I don't need that. I just want to be able to flexibly move for what the will of God is over my life. The next thing is that it sets the standards for dating and friendships. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to talk about it? Oh, I'm, I'm down. Let's talk. 
Okay, so it sets the standards for dating and friendships. Let's start with the dating part. If a man sees you as a sexual object, he will treat you like a sexual object. Whether you deserve to be treated that way or not, that is what will occur. If a man sees you as someone who does not value their modesty or protect their body, he might manipulate and take advantage of you. I noticed that when I started dressing modest, more men with respect started to approach me. When I wasn't dressing modest, I don't even know how to whistle. How do you whistle? Like the men would whistle at me, they're catcalling, they're cackalacking, and I'm like, hey, leave me alone. And I'm telling these men to leave me alone while still being a center of attention. It doesn't work that way. And I hate to say this because so many women, they don't want to hear the truth. So many people don't want to hear truth. And so many men want to act like that they don't sexually exploitate, exploit women just because of what they wear. Oh no, I can still treat her like a queen. Yeah, you're going to treat her like the, the, the queen of the damned, okay? And then, but at the end of the day, you're not going to respect her. You are going to be lusting after this woman. And you are going to be seeing other people lust after her because they don't have respect for her because they sense a lack of respect in herself. A lot of women who say, I don't change my body for a man. I don't change my body for people. I do it for myself. It's because, yes, you are broken. Yes, you are damaged. And that is okay because God is a healer and he still heals today. He's a living God. Now, don't shoot me for that. Don't shoot me for that because I'm not subscribing to the world's standards. This is the wrong channel if you want someone to sugarcoat truth. I am here to convict you in a healthy way while still loving you and comforting you through the process because it wasn't easy for me either. Okay? So let me be real and raw with you because I love you. Not because I want something out of you like the rest of the world. So I just say that so many women, they are doing so much for the attention and for dating and for all these things and for men and for friendships. Even women with their friends. Oh, if she's not a baddie, she can't hang with us. Though you can't sit with us. It's the mean girl approach. You know, there's an attitude with dressing provocative. There's an energy and there's a spirit that comes along with you dressing like an exposed piece of meat. Yeah, because you're dangling yourself over the dogs of this world. You're dangling yourself over the demons that are attached to these dogs. And unfortunately, these dogs and these demons are also human beings. And so it's so easy to be deceived into thinking someone loves you or likes you, but really there's a dog inside them. Really there's a demon attached and they really don't care about you. They just like what you have. So it sets the standard for dating and friendships. And then and let, me go, let, me go. <laughs> let me say this, just because a woman is dressed modesty, modestly does not mean she represents modesty. Let me say that again. Just because a woman is dressed modestly does not mean that she represents modesty. Because modesty is also a behavior, as we said in that first definition, it has a characteristic. It has a confidence and it has a perception that is, you know, that goes along with it. It, it is not just you walking around covered, but still acting a fool. It's you walking around covered because you know you're a representation of God and you won't allow certain behaviors. So let's still do that because we have women like Lori Harvey. We've got women like, you know, in this feminine, like soft girl era movement. And they have went and got their bodies done or they have went and done Pilates. They have went and done everything and they've covered up and they put on the suit and the jacket and they look like they're little princesses. But behind closed doors, they are fornicating, they are sinning, they are lying, they are influencing people to follow the enemy. And it does not make you a modest woman just because you dress modestly. I have seen plenty of women that are fully clothed and on an off day, they are a stripper. Okay? So this is no judgment, but we have to understand 
In order for us to get results and to change and to have those convictions that are healthy, to be able to represent Christ better, we have to start being true with ourselves and true with each other, okay? Um, the last thing is that it provides a standard and an example for the youth. Like I said, these are things that we must pass down to our children for a format of protection and also for them to know who they are in Christ. If we do not represent ourselves better, our children will not see an example that is better and they will not do better. Okay, so I've seen so many moms, even myself, there was things that I probably shouldn't have wore while taking my son to the playground. There's things that I probably shouldn't have wore while you know, showing up to my son's school. And it wasn't that I was dressed like so crazy or inappropriate, but still it's just like, it's a place for children. You know what I'm saying? And, and even though I feel like I've been pretty standard, you know, in dressing appropriately in, 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 my, in my child's presence, there were times where I went out with my friends and I felt that I had to dress up and look a little sexy because I didn't want to be like the odd one out, not comfortable yet being set apart and being in my own skin. And unfortunately, that led me to dressing up in a way that probably didn't represent women well. And my son is seeing that. He's a man. He's a little boy that's going to grow into a man. And I don't want his first version of beauty and his first version of femininity to be one of exposure and one of exploitation and deviousness. I want him to be able to see me and see me as, in his eyes, a queen. In his eyes, a woman of God. In his eyes, um, a, a princess of the, sun, of the sun. I want him to be able to say, my mom really showed me what being a woman is, is like. And when I go search for a wife, I want them to embody those characteristics. They may not be just like her, that's weird, um, Oedipus complex, but <laughs> I want him to be able to look at me and say, well, if you don't even meet these standards, I have no business dealing with you. I have no business courting you or dating you or even wanting to get married to you. So many beautiful, wonderful men of God get into relationships with very provocative, uh, you know, sinful women. And they end up under the attack of Satan because of who they're attached to. All right. So we're about to go ahead and try to wrap this up, but I have a few more things to cover. I'm going to share some Bible verses with you guys, but I'm going to say, what does the Bible say about modesty? The Bible describes modesty as an attitude of humility and decency in dress, grooming, and language behavior. If you are modest, you do not draw undue attention to yourself. Instead, you seek to glorify God in your body and in your spirit. You are a temple. You are the temple for the Holy Spirit. Um, the resource for that is the Church of Jesus Christ.org. I will link some of this stuff below so you guys can research it for yourself. What does the Bible say about modesty? Well, let's talk about some scriptures from the Bible. Okay. First Corinthians 6 and 19 through 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God, you are not your own. Verse 20 says, you were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. It's so crazy that we were bought with a price and somehow women are still out here being sold by men. Still out here being sold in the system. Still out here being sold and exploited by society. We are of God. That means that we are like God. It says that, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit living in us, which that means that we are housing the body of Christ. We are housing what is a part of the Trinity in us. A lot of you women love to post little pictures of your belly bump. When we're pregnant, we love to, to show off our baby and, and what we're about to give birth to. But in the same respect, we don't even realize that we are carrying something much greater than our own children, the Holy Spirit. And how dare we carry the Spirit of God in our flesh and it be exploited, it, 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 it be mutilated. 
it be just deliberately and inappropriately exposed. When I hear that, it almost makes me want to cry. It almost makes me want to cry because I love Jesus so much and I respect him so much. And I respect that he died for my sins and he died for me to live. And that he still came back to protect and cover me and sent the Holy Spirit to be my wisdom, to be my source, to be my comfort. And I had the audacity to walk around in the body that carries that same spirit of God as if it was nothing. So I don't know about y'all, but that that hits. The next scripture is Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you know better, you do better, baby. Then you will be able, that's not the scripture. <laughs> when you know better, you do better. That is not in the Bible, y'all. That's just me talking. I'm ad-libbing. So it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That says God's will is perfect and pleasing. In Romans 12 and 1, it says, for, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in a view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So Romans is talking about we worship God by representing him and honoring him with our temples. That is so powerful. You know, worship is not just us. You are holy. Oh, so holy. Nah, it ain't just you holding up lights in a room and falling out because the Holy Ghost has entered your spirit. Uh, it is not you falling out on the floor in church because the pastor says something good. And the choir worship team, praise and worship team, is hitting your spine. It's literally representing Christ. It is literally honoring him with our temples. That is so beautiful that us waking up every day and dressing modestly and showing up to the world um, as an influence of Christ is worship. It's a form of worship. Um, it says test and approve what God's will is. You have to test the things uh, of the world um, with the spirit. You have to test it against the spirit. If you're being convicted about something, it's because it's not the will of God. And God wants you to be like, hey. I know what the world is saying, but I need you to take a look at this again because it may not be what I said. Um, Timothy, okay, 1 Timothy 2 and 9. 1 Timothy 2 and 9. I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles. Oh, snap. <laughs> I'm just playing. Or gold pearls. Oh, snap. Or expensive clothes. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Okay, he's talking about like over adornation or over over adorning yourself, like the princes and kings and king queens of Egypt. Okay, like we are not supposed to be out here trying to outdo God physically. Okay, we're not trying to be so beautiful that people praise us or they idolize us and that's what he's talking about he's talking about elaborate hairstyles or gold and pearls and expensive clothes you know kind of like today's new age uh, culture where you got a lot of people who are just thinking they're goddesses and little gods and goddesses like because they dress up in all these crystals and stuff and they look like fairies it's like you're literally trying to compete with God, which is what Lucifer did. And it's part of why he got kicked out of heaven. So we have to understand that First Timothy is us just being kind of like reprimanded on how we should appear and not idolizing and not, you know, committing adultery with, with being visual sexual objects that people idolize and lust after. Okay. It says in verse 10, but with God's deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. So, yeah, we worship God with our appearance as well. Um, I have so many more. I'm going to link them below because I don't want to. I don't want to read all these. It's too much. I literally found so many verses that support modesty. 
Um, another one's I love was First John 2 and 16. It says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. I love that. I love that. And that's where I'm actually going to end because um, what, that, what that really proves to me is that God is trying to get us to see that our physical bodies can create lust. When sin first occurred in the garden with Adam and Eve, we became aware of our bodies. We became aware of our flesh. We became aware of what we looked like and who we were. We became ashamed. We were naked, you know, according to God's will because he didn't pervert us. We weren't looking at each other like, mm, them thighs over there looking nice and juicy or, ooh, girl, look at his back. He is fine and he got some muscles. We weren't doing that. Adam and Eve knew they were one. When Adam saw Eve, he's like, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. He didn't say she got a banging body and a big booty. Okay? He did not go to her physical attributes. He talked about how she was of his physical attributes. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was good. He was specifically drawn to her because she was a reflection of him. He was specifically drawn to her because as a reflection of God, she was a reflection of God. Because he is a reflection of God and she was a reflection of him. Okay, this can get so deep. And it just goes to show you that Adam wasn't lusting after Eve. And guess what? He still made her his wife. He still, you know, was like, boo, come join with me. You are my one. You are my soulmate. You are my other half. You are the, 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 the womb of me you are the wound area of me you are the flesh of my flesh the bone of my bone and you you are me so what that actually can lead into and I can talk about this in another video is that how we dress also represents us in Christ but it also attracts us to the people that are drawn to who we truly are like how I dress and how I look is a reflection of my character it's also a reflection of my personality and my uniqueness I'm not trying to copy a modesty style from someone else so when a man sees me he not only won't just see me for my body He'll just see me for my soul and my spirit, but he'll also see how I how I dress and how I look and what you, unique style I have because I'm using other things to complete me and not the validation of you liking my body. And I say that because it says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father. That lust never came from the Father. That never came from God. So if you're lusting or you're being lusted after, that is not of God. And that's why I feel that modesty is so important. And it's one of those things that I feel is really dope about modesty is that it, it protects you from the spirit of lust. And it uh, Proverbs also says, I know that said that, that will be the last one, but it says Proverbs 31 and 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. When you are clothed in strength and dignity, you don't have to be clothed in Givenchy. You don't have to be clothed in Louis Vuitton. You don't have to be clothed in Gucci. You don't have to be clothed in Prada or Balenciaga. You don't have to be clothed in, uh, you know, anything that is of this world. You are clothed by the beauty of God and by the strength and the dignity that God has given you. And it also says in Proverbs 31 and 30, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Isn't it interesting that we would attract people more if we just feared the Lord and we honored him with our temple? We would attract the people that are good for us. We would attract more people um, who value us because the fear of the Lord would be present in us. And people would be attracted to this. That's why when you're set apart, I get people staring at me all the time. I literally went to Publix yesterday. And I had my makeup done because I recorded another video. And I literally just had on a cute outfit that I felt was really cute. But no skin was showing. Not even my wrist was showing. I was literally from top to bottom clothed. So many men were looking at me. And I was like a little uncomfortable. But they weren't looking at my body. They were looking straight into my eyes. And I couldn't figure out. I'm like, why are they staring at me? But I had to remind myself that when you are set apart, 
There is a light and a glow that emanates from you. There is an energy that emanates from you. And New Ageism would, well, would love to honor and idolize you for that and say that you are the sexiest woman alive or you're the most beautiful woman in my eyes or girl, you're so fine, you're a goddess. But with God, someone is looking into my eyes trying to wonder why my soul is radiating. And when they come to me, if they talk to me, they're going to find out it's because of Christ and it's not because of anything I'm doing. It's not because of this makeup on my face. I can wash this off. It's not because my skin, you know, that can break out on my period. Um, it's not because genetics. It's because there's literally a radiating spirit of the Holy Spirit coming and emanating out of me. And for some reason that attracts people all over the world. It even attracts darkness. You know, it attracts everybody because... God wants you drawn to him. And so when people, even of the world, are drawn to me, I don't take it as a bad thing. I just have to guard myself and protect myself and use discernment because people will stare at you. People will look at you. People will want to start conversation with you. And not everybody deserves to, you know, be a part of your particular experience here on earth. And I'm very particular about who gets to access me. But I do sometimes occasionally have people walk up to me and they're like, wow, I don't know what it is about you, but you know, I just can't stop looking at you. You're so beautiful. And, and they're not talking about my face. They're not talking about my face. It's not vanity that they're talking about. It's really something about me. And I'm not saying this in a boastful way. I'm saying this as honor to God. Something about me that they see that they don't understand. And it's drawing them to me. And really what it is, is it's, it's the being clothed by that strength and that dignity of God that emanates and radiates this pure beauty that is not of the flesh. It's of the spirit. So I love you guys so much. Thank you so much if you stuck it out watching this entire video. Because this video, I don't know how long it is. After I edit it, it might be an hour long. But it was worth it. It was worth it. And those of you who actually watch my full videos and you actually click off of YouTube and you hear everything that I said, I'm so grateful for you because when you watch the videos that I create, these are literally downloads from the Holy Spirit for people that need to hear this or people who need to be reaffirmed in what you're already doing. You know, when you're set apart, it can be kind of lonely. And until you see a video or you hear something or you meet someone that's similar to you, you always feel kind of alone. I, I know I feel alone sometimes. I'm not lonely because I have the Lord, but I do feel alone sometimes because I'm like, I'm about to be one of the only ones talking about this type of stuff. And even people who are talking about modesty, some of them are afraid to go as deep as I have been convicted and instructed by God to, to go. So I, I do want you to know that I appreciate you and I value you for spending this time with me and for taking the time out of your day and out of your freedom and out of your life to be able to experience a moment with me and God and talk talk about these things and hear what my um, viewpoints and my opinions and my convictions are. So I love you deeply. I honor you and I pray for you. I pray for all the women out there who are struggling with their self-image, who are struggling with, with, with valuing their bodies and valuing the, the temple that the Holy Spirit operates through, which is you. If you are struggling with these type of things, please email me. I'm going to link my email below and I might, I'm not promising this, okay? But if enough people reach out to me, I might start taking consultations for assisting with modesty. I had a girl that I know reach out to me and she was like, hey, I love the way you dress. I love the way you show up in the world as a woman of God. And it just it influences me to want to go on a modesty journey as well. And it's crazy because I've never spoken out that I'm modest or that I practice modesty. It's just I think people can tell because they're like, wait a minute. I've never seen your elbows. <laughs> I've never seen your kneecaps like um but no people are just like I feel you're so beautiful and I don't know what you're doing but I like what you're doing help me with my style help me you know I've been convicted by God to change the way I dress and to not attract just like so much negative you know sexual attention uh, I just want to mature my wardrobe or dress more modestly or dress more professionally and 
hey, I'm, you know, it might be a business out there. It might be a second income for me, a third income, because I already have two streams of income. It might be a third income for me to assist women and really help and like really minister to women um, about modesty because I am I went to school for fashion design okay I have been drawing and designing clothes since I was a little girl I can sew I have created complete fashion lines um, and I definitely do want to do a clothing line in the future but that is for the future the Holy Spirit has definitely told me that it's going to be something in my future but right now maybe I could just help women um, find their style get get their convictions to match their wardrobe and assist you in giving advice or consultation in the area of uh you know showing up as as the way you feel that god wants you to show up you might need a little help so reach out to me via email if that's something that you're interested in if you're not interested in that still subscribe to the channel still like this video still share it with one of your sisters i love you i honor you i value you and i'm praying for you um, that God opens up your heart to be able to represent him in the best way possible. All right. Bye. Love you. See you later.